Okay. So uh, let's talk about the universe. Oh, you know, like that okay. little thing. That's literally everything. Right. We think of it as like this vast, ever expanding space. Yeah. But what if that's not quite the whole picture? Yeah, it's fascinating how our intuition wants to see the universe as this yeah. smooth, continuous thing, like zooming in on a fractal. Right. You expect to find those same patterns, that same seamless flow, no matter how deep you go. But we're about to take a deep dive into a theory that throws that intuition right out the window. Yeah. We're talking about physicist Sean Carroll and his wild idea, completely discretized, finite quantum mechanics. And just to be clear, when we say wild, we mean the kind of idea that makes you question right. everything you thought you knew about reality. Mm. Right. It's one thing to say the universe had a beginning, but to say it might be running on a finite loop. Exactly. That's next level stuff. Exactly. And to understand why this is such a radical departure, we need to back up a bit. Okay. Physics for a long time has relied on this idea of a continuous reality. Okay. Think of a perfectly smooth line stretching out infinitely in both directions. So like our everyday experience of time, right? Yeah. It seems to flow one moment blurring into the next. Exactly. But here's the thing. Even quantum mechanics, which is famous for introducing this idea of quanta, right. these tiny discrete packets of energy, yeah. still fundamentally uses math that assumes this smooth, continuous reality. Okay. So even though quantum mechanics tells us the universe is a bit pixelated at the subatomic level, it's still using the math of smooth lines and curves to describe it. Precisely. And that creates some real head scratchers for physicists, yeah. especially when you start thinking about extreme situations right. like the Big Bang or what happens at the singularity of a black hole. Right. Those are places where the math literally breaks down, yeah. giving us nonsensical answers like infinite density. Right. I could see how infinite density might be a sign that something's off with our theories. Yeah. So is that where Carroll's theory comes in? Does he have a different way of thinking about the universe? He does. What if instead of a smooth line, the universe is more like a film reel with a set number of frames? Okay. That's the crux of Carroll's idea. Okay. He proposes that the universe is actually finite. It has a limited number of states it can be in. Ooh. He uses this term finite dimensional Hilbert space, which basically means there's a set playlist of how the universe can be arranged and it just keeps playing on repeat. So instead of this infinite ever expanding picture of the universe, hmm. we're talking about a cosmic loop. A cosmic loop with some very particular rules. And here's where it gets really interesting. Okay. Carroll suggests that things like space time, even the fundamental laws of physics themselves, might actually be emergent properties of this underlying structure. Hold on. I need to wrap my head around that for a second. You're saying that space time and the laws of physics, all the rules that seem so fundamental to how our universe works, might just be like special effects in this cosmic movie. It's a mind bending concept, but uh, think about it like this a single pixel on your computer screen is just a tiny dot of color, right? But string billions of those pixels together in the right way, and you get incredibly complex images, movies, even entire virtual worlds with their own internal logic and rules. Okay, I see where you're going with this. So our universe's complexity, the stars, the galaxies, even us having this conversation, it could all just be the result of these discrete chunks of reality interacting in ways that create the illusion of a smooth, continuous existence. Exactly. It's like the universe is playing a cosmic game of pixel art, and we're just zoomed in on one tiny part of the masterpiece marveling at the details. That's a pretty awesome thought. But it also raises a lot of questions, like how does this finite looping universe square with things like the Big Bang? Uh -huh. I mean, if the universe is just cycling through a set number of states, how did it even begin in the first place? You've hit on one of the big challenges this theory has to grapple with. How do you reconcile a model of a finite repeating universe with the observed expansion of the cosmos? And the idea that it all started from a single point, that's a question that physicists are still trying to figure out. And what about all the weirdness we observe at the quantum level? Uh -huh. Things like particles being in multiple states at once or popping in and out of existence. Mm -hmm. Does that fit into this picture of a finite repeating universe. That's where things get really interesting. See, one of the most intriguing aspects of Carroll's idea is how it might actually help us understand some of these quantum mysteries. Remember we were talking about emergent space time? Yeah. Well, what if other aspects of reality as we know it, even the very laws of physics, are also emergent properties of this underlying discrete structure? So you're saying the strangeness of quantum mechanics might make more sense if we view it through the lens of a universe built on a finite loop. That's a pretty bold claim. 
It is, but it's one of the things that makes this theory so compelling. It has the potential to bridge the gap between the familiar, predictable world we experience every day and the mind-boggling realm of quantum mechanics. Okay, I'm starting to see why this theory is causing such a stir in the world of physics. It's like taking everything we thought we knew about the universe and flipping the script. And we're not done with the plot twists yet. Remember that question you asked earlier about how a finite repeating universe squares with the Big Bang? Right. Well, there's another even weirder wrinkle to consider something called the Boltzmann brain problem. Okay, you're gonna have to like remind me about this whole Boltzmann brain thing. Right. It sounds kind of ominous, to be honest. <laughs> It's definitely one of those ideas that uh, makes you question the nature of reality. Imagine for a moment that the universe is this finite repeating system we've been discussing. This loop plays out over and over again for all eternity. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. The universe is basically stuck on repeat. What does that have to do with brains, though? Well, according to the Boltzmann brain idea, if this is true, then statistically speaking, it's far more likely for something like a human brain with all its memories and experiences to randomly fluctuate into existence out of the chaos of a repeating universe than it is for an entire universe like ours to exist with a long, complex history. Wait, so you're saying there's a chance that I'm not actually a real person with a past stretching back to childhood, but just a random collection of particles that assembled itself into a brain a few moments ago? It's a very unsettling thought, isn't it? This is the crux of the Boltzmann brain problem. If the universe is just endlessly repeating, then statistically, it's more probable for us to be fleeting, illusory brains that pop up out of the chaos than persistent beings with a real continuous existence. Okay, that is definitely messing with my head a little. So does Carol offer any solutions to this problem? How do we know we're not just Boltzmann brains having a very convincing hallucination of reality? Carol does propose a couple of intriguing possibilities. One idea is that our universe, while technically repeating, might be structured in a way that makes our kind of existence, the kind with a Big Bang, stars, galaxies, and beings who can contemplate the nature of reality, a very rare but ultimately finite event. So we're like a cosmic glitch in the system a one-time anomaly in an otherwise very different kind of repeating universe. Exactly. It's as if our entire universe from beginning to end is just one giant fluctuation in a much larger cosmic structure. Okay. I'm willing to entertain that idea. It's definitely preferable to the whole illusory brain thing. Yeah. But you mentioned Carol has another potential solution. This one might be even more mind-blowing. What if our perception of time, of past, present, and future is itself an emergent property of this finite system? Whoa, hold on a second. Are we talking about time being an illusion? Like, it doesn't really exist in the way we experience it. It's a radical concept, but it's one that some physicists, including Carol, are starting to explore. What if this cosmic clock we've been discussing isn't actually ticking in a linear, sequential way? Maybe our experience of time is just a product of how our consciousness interacts with this finite, unchanging reality. Okay, I'm going to need a minute to process that. So if time isn't what we think it is, does that mean this whole looping universe idea is even weirder than we first imagined? It certainly adds another layer of complexity, but it also opens up some incredible possibilities. If time itself is emergent, then maybe this finite number of states in the universe isn't cycling in any way we can currently comprehend. So it's not like a movie reel playing over and over again, but something else entirely. Exactly. It might be more helpful to think of it like a tapestry with intricate patterns woven throughout. Our experience of time in this scenario is like running our fingers along a single thread, perceiving only a tiny fraction of the whole picture. Wow. That's a pretty awe-inspiring way to think about it. Yeah. But it also makes it really hard to visualize what this finite universe actually looks like. It certainly pushes the limits of our imagination. And that's important to keep in mind. What we've been discussing today is cutting-edge theoretical physics. It's exciting, it's mind-expanding, but it's also highly speculative. So where does that leave us? Have we solved the mysteries of the universe today? I'd say we've accomplished something even more valuable. We've expanded our capacity for wonder. By grappling with these big questions, with these mind-bending ideas, we're reminded of just how much there is still to discover about the universe and our place within it. To recap, we've taken a deep dive into the possibility of a finite universe governed by completely discretized quantum mechanics, exploring how everything from space-time to the laws of physics might be emergent properties of this underlying structure. We've encountered the mind-boggling Boltzmann brain problem and considered some potential solutions, including the possibility that our universe is a unique fluctuation in a larger cosmic scheme, or that our very perception of time is an illusion. And while we may not have definitive answers yet, the journey itself has been illuminating. 
It's a reminder that sometimes the most profound truths lie in asking the right questions, even if the answers seem impossibly strange and wonderful. And that's what makes exploring these ideas so exciting. It's a reminder that the universe is full of surprises, and the more we learn, the more we realize how much more there is to learn. So keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep looking up at those stars. You never know what mind-blowing discoveries might be waiting just around the corner. Until next time on The Deep Dive.